All right, let's see. Okay, yeah, this still yeah, works. Yeah, this still yeah, works. Tyler yeah. won. It's been a while. But anyway, how the guys have it is going on. Irene, back again with a, another video. It has been five months since my last video. It's been way too long, and I figured. I feel ready. I feel good. I was waiting for to be in the mood for recording. And as the title suggests, I have quit my job yet again. I made a video like this about two years ago when I left my second to last job. I was getting ready for this one. Uh, let me just recap three things that have always been like a driver from the start of career or working in tech. First, I wanted to role that encompasses or helps him get better at technical knowledge and also on the business side of things. And that's why I did a computer engineering, more technical degree. And then for masters, I went the MBA route. And then number two is I wanted to make sure that I'm in a position where I get to earn well, decently, or I put myself in a position where I can earn quite well in the next role. So that has always been a vision, even when I started earning as little as my first job. <laughs> My job history, I've worked as a dev, I've worked as a scrum master, uh, then moving to a, a different country because I was initially in South Africa. Then I moved to the European area and I wanted to experience that and that took me back into the tech side of things and network engineering or systems engineering. I felt like two years is a good time and I wanted to kind of return back to working kind of with devs a bit. So why I then left my first company that I was working with to another was pay. I wanted just better pay, to be honest. And that has always also been at the background of my uh, career progression, my employment history, because the more you discuss, especially amongst yourselves as teammates, the more you realize that, okay, uh, we shouldn't struggle this much to make ends meet, whereas we are putting so much energy into our work. We are uh, dedicated to this. We love what we do, but we shouldn't uh, be so like tight in finances. We should be comfortable enough. You shouldn't be, not that you have to be rich, but comfortable enough. So I moved into a better earning position. And that was also a good learning experience. I still stayed at Scrum Master, trying to also see how people do things in a different point of view. And then uh, during that whole thing, I've always wanted to move to Europe. So I was in South Africa previously. Uh, that's where I did my education. That's where I did my first couple of jobs. And I want to explore the European region. And so I found this job. It was technical, uh, back into the technical side of things. So it was network, uh, sales, uh, systems engineering, all that into one. So I was excited for this. I was like, okay, I'm getting Europe. I'm getting technical. I'm like, okay, let's take it. Let's take it uh, as it comes. So I grew in this role. I really put myself in it. I explored Europe as a, a plus, which was fantastic. And uh, it came to a point where, in fact, about, should I say towards the end of last year, I started to think, okay, do I want to see, stay in this role long term or do I uh, want to transition, going to see what's out there? And I made up my mind at one point that I wanted to go kind of back a bit into a product owner role where you still have a knowledge of how the tech side of things work and you also have some business knowledge some strategy some all like all that kind of meshed into one so i started to do my investigation i started to uh that's also another thing when you investigate speak to people speak to people that are doing the roles that you want to transition into uh but at that time when i made the idea that i will quit my job i did not have any job lined up so i had no uh plan like concrete plan of what next but i kind of had a clue of kind of things that maybe are interesting me but i needed to do more research talk to more people so that's what i did 
I talk to product owners, I reach out to maybe friends of friends or even some friends that I work with in previous companies that were doing the role just to see, okay, what does a job entail? And if I'm to interview or start to interview, uh, what should I expect or uh, what uh, do jobs look for, companies look for? And or in addition to also reading and and then in my research of in terms of reading i got to learn okay these are the things that i need to really know or certification that i need to get or courses that i need to do just to boost my to make my cv a lot more fluffy a lot more ah uh, because let me that's also another thing i've learned in this whole process is cvs must look like i catch you make it one pager to be honest if you have uh less than even six years of experience just make it one pager because I've, I've not tackled the past in terms of my experience now the current situation which is towards the end of last year i like okay i need to make the move but it was about at that point I, I was about one year and three months into the role but something that i have learned along the way is you need to give yourself six to nine months at least uh to just get yourself ready get yourself uh, there's just so much that you need to do before you actually land a job. Sometimes some people get lucky, it takes a much shorter, but always good to like, to be ahead of it and try to see what you can learn or what you need to mentally also prepare yourself. Cause this is a transition to change. I don't mind change, but like any human being, you have to like mentally get yourself prepared. So at that time I knew. Okay, I want something product manager, product owner. Uh, and so I was like, okay, things that I want to boost my knowledge in is the cloud side. Uh, because yes, I knew of a cloud, but I had not actively worked in the cloud or gotten hands on experience. So the first thing I did was uh, look into the AWS certifications. So they have a practitioner, practitioner, and then they have also the solutions architect. Uh, but I was like, no, I have some tech background. I did my CCNA, CCNP, DevNet, all the Cisco related courses, certifications, and I do have some technical background. So doing a practitioner, that's more of, if you don't have much tech background, that's where you go. So I was like, okay, let me go for kind of the big one. Okay. Slightly big one. Uh, the solutions architect, that's not the solutions architect professional. That's the beginner one. A solutions architect associate uh, to be specific so i went for that one i started to learn i found a guy on linkedin learning called tom carpenter i watched his videos i got to uh, just really understand because on that world and uh trying to ready myself for the certification but along the way i also realized that i'm interested in data science and i actually mentioned it in my to-do goals or to-do items for this year uh so yes, so there were in the company, there were some data science kind of learning paths, so data science green belt, that for starters and data science blue belt. So I went through the green belt just to really understand the like basics of data science in terms of also build my Python because I have worked with C sharp mainly and on uh, Java Android related, but not really actively Python. So learn that statistics dive back into that a bit. Uh, what else uh, did we get it? then after I finished the green belt then I moved over to blue belt that's more in-depth where you learn more Python for data science and machine learning uh, you dive deeper into GCP that's Google Cloud um, the, the Google Cloud platform which is their competitor for AWS so just this was all in a way to kind of make my CV look shinier and to attract like the employer that I wanted because I wanted to be in the product owner, product manager kind of thing. And I knew for that, you have to be both strong in the business communication. Communication must be strong, but you also have to know what you're talking about in the, on the technical st standpoint, because sometimes you're interacting with uh, the business in terms of uh, middle management or higher management. And sometimes you're interacting with developers. You have to be able to speak each of the languages the in between. And then along that path, I realized that there's this other role called a program manager. So I was like, oh my goodness, this role is quite perfect and quite also suits me because now 
uh, companies are transitioning from project manager to a more program manager where you're dealing with cross-functional teams and so you're not just focused on one project as a project manager usually is you're kind of orchestrating multiple teams and multiple projects so you become a program manager so i started to read into that and I'm like okay this is what i really want i finally found that and that also took me time to actually get to this realization i got to this realization probably about february of this year or march of this year and but good enough that i had done some of my readings and aws data science so i kind of had more more to work with and i knew okay this is what those jobs are looking for. I went on LinkedIn for jobs, uh, program manager jobs, try to identify, okay, this is what uh, the requirements are. Can I check off all of this and also check back on my CV? You have to also do check back on your CV in terms of editing your language that you use on your CV to kind of tie into what the jobs are looking for and also your learnings as well. Keep your CV updated. So that's what I did. And so yes, that was my uh, current terms of looking for jobs. So it's a long process that I tell you prep give yourself six to nine months because it's a long process also looking for jobs frustrating you get so many regrets that it becomes a part of you that's like oh another regret another regret but that should keep you like going forward because you want to learn land as many interviews as possible because it preps you gets you ready for next interviews and you get experience really is the best teacher the more interviews you do the better you get that you can actually just roll out of bed and because something that you also learn is a lot of companies ask quite the same questions so if you have your template of kind of key questions or key projects that you'll talk about it's so easy to kind of relate with too let me uh let me just round up this video i think i've i've talked quite a bit but just to leave you with some tips in terms of current wise i have i finally i made my mind to quit towards the end of last year and it was only until end of may that i got my job offer a good job offer and as a program manager and uh, because we have a two months notice here and yeah so that has been i'm excited to really start the job uh, but in summary what i leave you with prep six to nine months uh in terms of give yourself six to nine months uh, when you decide that you want to leave the job so that you get yourself ready you prep your cv you do your research you talk to people you edit your cv back and forth you uh see how you can position yourself for different companies and also you get to see what's out there in terms of pay you don't want to be underpaid that's also important see on glassdoor okay or on usually glassdoor is a good one uh for salary kind of uh, ranges because a lot of companies do ask you what your range is so i can make different videos uh just to really answer a lot of his questions for starters also kind of see do some research in your research see why do you, uh, you want to live the current job that you're in or why would you want to live it in six to nine months time uh where would you ideally want to go if you're not sure of the where just do a lot of learning do a lot of talking to people research just to see what job actually fits uh you as a person be honest with yourself uh list down your top three strengths or top three things that you're looking for in a job and try to refine that and spend time with yourself really understanding what you're looking for because it is out there that's a thing but yes guys uh hopefully that gave you some insight and yeah that is it for me for now hopefully you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like subscribe for more videos thank you so much for watching if you have any questions about anything that i've talked about in this video and it's quite long please leave that in the comment section down below or some videos that you'd like me to make uh, basing on maybe things that I've talked about in this video. Please leave that in the comment section and don't forget to like and see you in the next one. Peace.